Like I remember somebody, one of my friends asking me when I started my business. So, you know, who are your target market? What, what niche are you going to operate in? Um, and I said, well, seven billion people in the world and everybody's got problems. How hard can it be, right? Everybody's a target, everybody's a target client. And I, you know, I look back on that. That was the most naive, effing stupid thing that anybody could ever think. It's so far away from the truth of how you can build a successful business. Because that's just, you know, what are you going to do? Like wander around like I was doing when I was in Lust, coaching taxi drivers and baristas, right? It's madness. But so, okay, well then t tell, tell me about that. T take us through what, because we, we, you know, you and I know that the, one of the ends of the story is you built a successful coaching business in London and you built it starting in 2009. And so what did you learn from those videos and the blogs and the coaching and how did you grow that business? So I guess, you know, for context and we'll come on to this, I'm now in the middle of probably building my, I probably categorize it as my second coaching practice and my third business. So the first business that I built was a career coaching business. And what I found out from, you know, doing all the work, doing the reading and actually taking, taking some action, doing some marketing, business development, learning to sell, it, you know, the big thing I found out is if you want to sell coaching, at the time everybody was saying you need to have a niche, a clearly defined niche. So I found that really useful because it took me from 7 billion people down to let's see if we can find a group of people who have a problem that they need to solve. You know, this is it, now I you know, mainly coach entrepreneurs who are building businesses. That's the premise for a business, right? Like you need to find a product or service or solution to help people who have a problem to solve that problem in some way, you know. And so coaching is no different from that. You know, so I identified this group of people who were probably very similar to me in their late twenties to mid thirties, who had gone into the professional world and become a banker or a lawyer or an accountant, doing something which, you know, from my perspective, having got out of it, is very dull and tedious and doesn't necessarily play to their strengths. You know, some people go and be a lawyer and they love it and that's great, but there are a lot of people and you know, anybody who's been out in the world will meet people who've done those jobs and been really unhappy in them. Uh, so you've got this group of people who are unhappy and not doing something that really you know, fits with their values, place to their, their great attributes and, and allows them to do something that feels impactful. So they got a problem, right? Because okay. as I know, from my story that we've talked about, it can make you really unhappy, unfulfilled. Um, so that's the starting point. Like you've got a problem that can be solved. And, and one of the questions that, that coaches are always, because there's still that wisdom, that wisdom, I'm actually going to put air quotes on it, right? Yeah. That, that you have to have a niche. Not, every, not everybody says that these days, but most people, a lot of people. But, but, but a lot of people still do. And so the question that always comes back is, well, how do you find that? Because we can all draw a line around a group of people and we probably all draw a line around a group of people with a problem. But there are a million, you know, well, if we've got seven and nearly eight billion people now, there's probably, I don't know, infinite ways of drawing circles around people with problems. So how did you, it sounds like part of it was the experience you had, part of it was the opportunity you saw because of the recession. And just because like you say, if you, especially if you're in a city like London, you meet a bunch of people, if you socialize, who do those jobs, who it doesn't fire their souls. Uh, and most jobs have that, but so, yeah, what did you do? What I would say is, I think I did what a lot of people who set up successful coaching practices do to find their niche which is look at what am I most credible and relatable for in terms of how my niche will see me. So generally speaking, people setting up their first coaching niche will very often gravitate to something that they themselves have successfully done. Yeah, um, essentially a bit like you coaching themselves of what, in this case, two years ago or three years ago. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause if you're saying to somebody, you're a professional, you're stuck in, the, in this miserable rut and you can't get out. I was you three years ago and now look at me, I've got my own business and I'm doing stuff that I love. And I, what helped me to get there is coaching. Yeah, that puts you in that position where people would think, well, this guy must 
have some idea what he's talking about because he's actually done what I want to do. So I think that, you know, that helped me to land on this as this is a, a viable niche. You know, I had experience in professional services. So a lot of my original, a lot of my first clients that I got as a career coach came from professional services because I also had some connection network there. So that's obvious as well. You know, and how did you find those people? How did we get to those? Once you've got the niche, where do the people come from? So, you know, obviously, like I said, I had a quite a big network within professional services because I worked in that field for 10 years. So I went around and told everybody I knew in professional services, this is what I'm doing now. A bunch of coffees around different parts yeah. of the city, emails or what kind of things? Um, yeah, coffee, coffees with people in London. I still had connections in California. Turns out you can do coaching on the telephone and by Skype, which is useful. So I ended up getting a lot of clients in the States as well. Um, yeah, just saying to people, look, my, I kind of realized after a few, a few months of doing this, that I wanted to become, you know, if somebody in professional services was sitting with their colleague and they were whining about how miserable they were and they wish they'd never got into it in the first place and they wish they could find something that they love to do, which happens quite a lot in professional services, I wanted to be the first person that came to mind for the receiver of that information in that mm. conversation. And they say, you should, you should talk to Phil. Cause he, and, and that basically happened, right? That basically did happen. I mean, not to say that it happened in every conversation, but I, you know, by having a clear niche and having messages around, these are the kind of people I help and these are the results that I get. And actually, you know, having some success stories already from the Deloitte days, which was useful, but even, you know, I would say, even if you don't have that in your background as a new coach, once you've done one or two clients, you've got a success story. You don't need to have 50. You need a couple of good ones because uh, you know, when you talk about them, you'll talk about the same ones over and over again. Anyway, your best, you know, your favorite best clients. Well, and I also think that's quite good. It's good to do that. Even if you've got 50, it's good to talk about the two best ones because those are the ones you most want more of. Exactly. So, you know, by spreading the word, by talking about the success stories. Yeah, I also did, a, like, like I said, I read some books on how to build a business. So what else did I do? I wrote a blog for a few years about career change, um, which, and I did lots of stuff to try and promote the blog around the world, um, you know, build up some network. That wasn't particularly effective, but it, I, I think all of that was on my website. So when people came to look, it made me look like I was an expert on career change. Um, one thing that worked really well, um, you know, there was this whole kind of theory around how do, you, how do you find out where your niche group of people are getting their information from and talking to each other. And one of the things that was suggested was finding organizations that also speak to the same niche. So I found a website called Escape the City, which was just launched, it was launched in 2008 which basically had all the same messages that I had. It was saying, look, these city jobs can be very boring for some people. We've got, and they were a job board. We have a bunch more really interesting jobs that we'll post and, you know, come to us. They also started running events to help people get out of the city and, you know, live a better, more interesting life. I met the two guys who founded that. We had coffee in the kitchen of one of their, their parents' house because they were sort of, bossing in there at that time in order to get the money to run the business and build it up. And they, I mean, they've been very successful. They're great guys. And we sat and ate bananas and drank coffee. And I kind of said, look, you've got a bunch of people who want to get out. I know how to do it. What if I run a coaching service on behalf of you for your readership base and you, you promote me to them? And they said, okay, sounds like a good deal. So we sort of shook hands on the spot and that partnership really got me a lot of profile it got me they went from having when i met them i think they had ten thousand subscribers over the next year they went to having a hundred thousand subscribers to their newsletter and they put me in front of all of those people pretty much every week so suddenly i had a really nice pipeline of people coming to me from that partnership right in my demographic already with some credibility from that partnership because they like to escape the city I mean, they're just great guys and they've got a great ethos and they were kind of building a movement and, you know, with a very clear need, you know, they were coming to me exactly because they wanted what I was selling. So, 
yeah, I tried a bunch of other stuff for marketing as well. That was the one that really stuck for me and helped me out big time. And yeah, it, I wouldn't say I was throwing paint at the wall, but that, the blog didn't really work, but it built me some credibility. I did a lot of talks and speeches and training sessions. I'm not sure they really helped all that much. So I never got much business out of that. I literally tried doing like, um, you know, open house coaching in coffee shops where anybody who, want, who wanted to do a career change could book a session with me. They didn't really work. But it was, it was trying a bunch of different things and it was moving into that discipline, proactive space of building a business of saying, right, this month, these are the three things I'm going to do in order to you know, build a pipeline of clients. I'm going to write a blog. I'm going to do something for Escape the City, you know, to communicate, like build that practice. And I'm going to do the coffee shop coaching and then actually following through and doing it. But what happened is I started to get a pipeline. I did some training on how to sell and convert and went from being completely hopeless to being like marginally hopeless to being okay to being what? quite good over time. You know, that, that's an art form in itself. 